Okay, so you finally decided to get AWS certified. Congrats. But if you're new to cloud, how can you pass this exam if you don't have much experience? It sounds crazy going from day one to passing in 12 days, right? Look, not only will I show you the procedure to follow so you can pass in 12 days or less, I'll also show you how you can be as close to 100% sure you're ready to pass before you take the actual exam. Now, before I get to it, subscribe for new breakdowns every week on how to succeed and get paid in tech. Quick note, all resources and websites mentioned will be available on the techordie.com website. I'll include the link in the show description. Now let's begin. When you start prepping for this exam, you want to understand what this exam expects you to know. That's why step one is to read the entire AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Exam Guide. According to the guide, you should focus your studying on the following four areas. AWS Cloud Concepts, Security and Compliance within the AWS Cloud, Understanding of the Core AWS Services, and Understanding of the Economics of the AWS Cloud. You'll also find the official exam domain and objectives that you need to know. These are the official names and exam grade weights of the question groups that match up to the areas you should study. Now there's also a section on this document called which key tools, technologies, and concepts might be covered on the exam. This section is important because Amazon is stating that most, if not all the questions will be coming from what's listed on these three pages at the end of the exam guide. And speaking from my own experience, it definitely felt like most of the questions I saw on my certification exam were from the items listed in this section. Your goal should be to knock out step one in a day. Step two. After you read the exam guide, the next step is to read the AWS white paper called The Overview of Amazon Web Services. A lot of what you will read here is interesting, but this part of the process is probably the most painful. There's only 80 pages of content to read, but it's dense. Basically, you'll need to read about Amazon's perspective on the business advantages of cloud versus on-premise. After that, you'll need to read about the plethora of AWS cloud services. Most of this document is about the AWS services. Each service has a quick breakdown of what it's about, how it benefits you, and a link to the webpage that gives even more context about the technology. Remember what I said about the last three pages of the exam guide from step one? Most if not all the questions will be coming from what's listed on those three pages at the end of the exam guide. The overview document has a lot more services listed than what's on the exam guide. I would still recommend reading all of the services, but essentially you'll only need to do extra studying for the items listed in the appendix of the exam guide. Now, each service description has a link to that services webpage. Take an extra five minutes to get a little more context about each specific AWS service listed on both the overview and exam guide. After you do that, create a document called AWS One Liners. You want one sentence that describes what the service is and what is the benefit of using the service. This will force you to quickly sum up the service in a simple statement that's easy to remember. Make sure you write in terms that you understand. Do this for every service that's on both the overview and the appendix of the exam guide. Also, while you're getting further context on a specific service, look at the services pricing info on the specific services webpage. You want to start to be familiar with pricing terms like on-demand and spot instances. Remember, as of the time of this video, billing and pricing will be roughly 16% of your exam questions, so don't skip this part. You might be tempted to make flashcards, but I wouldn't recommend making flashcards this early in the review. At this point, you're just dumping raw data in your head. But keep watching so I can show you how you'll know for sure when you're ready to take and pass the exam. 
in the meantime, you need to let this stuff marinate for a couple of days. So give yourself some time and break down the AWS overview and each related service description page over the course of three days. Step three, there's another AWS white paper called how AWS pricing works. Make sure to read as much as you can. What you're reading is all the different ways you can elect to be charged for using AWS cloud services. There's a lot of info here. So here's the big picture concept to guide you as you break it down. Make sure you head into that exam, understanding how to select a combination of plans, service types, and features that'll save you the most money while addressing the technical needs. This is a certification that can springboard you to a job where you recommend the best AWS cloud solutions while keeping costs under control. So just like they did for my exam, they're gonna test your ability to pick the right solution without overspending. Amazon wants to know if you know these four things about their pricing philosophy. You pay as you go, you pay for what you use, you pay less as you use more, and you pay even less when you reserve capacity. Now's when you start to make flashcards. And when you make flashcards, the danger here is getting overwhelmed with all of this info. Make sure you only spend time making pricing flashcards for the services that are listed on the exam guide from step one. Again, those are the services listed under the which key tools, technologies, and concepts might be covered on the exam section at the end of the exam guide. I recommend that you use both the Quizlet app and their website for your flashcards. That way you can always study no matter where you are. Whenever you find yourself somewhere just killing time, study from the app. Type on the website, study on the go. Step three should take you one day to complete and it's gonna be a long one. You're still in data capture mode, so focus on getting those flashcards done. Step four, there's a page on the AWS training site called Compare AWS Support Plans. There are two sections on this page. The first section describes how AWS provides customer support. The second compares the features, pricing, and service expectations of the four support plans. When you start taking practice exams, you'll be coming back to this page on the AWS website. That's because the pricing questions for this exam are going to test your ability to remember and understand almost everything on this webpage. You have to know the price ranges and response times for each support plan. You need to know how each support plan approaches training, technical account management, concierge support, enhanced technical support, and trusted advisor checks. Use Quizlet on your computer so you can copy and paste to your flashcards quicker. Step four should take one day to complete. Step five. This is where you take the self-paced AWS video course that goes over in detail about everything you read in the previous steps. It includes a final assessment where you have to solve questions similar to those found on the actual exam. I remember this took a while to knock out. I spent a lot of time cross-referencing an AWS service mentioned in these videos with a corresponding webpage about that service. You need to visit the main page for a lot of the services for better context to what is being described in the videos. The links are included in each video so you don't have to waste time searching for them. But again, I can't stress this enough. Visit the links for more context. The information on those pages are really helpful to understanding what the specific technology does, the benefits, who should use it, and how pricing works for that particular AWS service. This is where the majority of your flashcards are gonna come in. The videos themselves aren't too long, but you're gonna to have to work on those flashcards while bouncing back and forth from the AWS site to the video course. You're gonna need some coffee as step five should take three days to complete. Okay, on to the final step, step six. Even though this is the last step, this is the most important step. The reason why this is the most important step is because this is how you'll know if you're ready to take and pass the exam. Basically, this is where you take test after test after test until you're ready for the real exam. 
you're gonna go to tutorialsdojo.com and buy the AWS certified cloud practitioner exams for about 15 bucks. It might even be cheaper than that. Either way, this is the key to closing out your review. Their exam questions are gonna give you a variety of scenarios in which you need to select the best AWS service that'll satisfy the business requirements in the question. Each question will have a written breakdown for the correct and incorrect answers. Anything you get wrong, spend five to 10 minutes reviewing the concept and making the Quizlet flashcard. Keep your flashcards simple. Use as little words as possible. You might have to break up a concept into two or more flashcards. Take at least five tests. I remember the questions on Tutorials Dojo being harder than the actual exam. So if you're scoring over 75% for the last three exams, then you're ready to sit for the real exam. This is the final step and you should spend three days focused on this last step. Ideally, you wanna start this process four days before the actual exam. There's no need to drag it out. Trust me, if you follow this plan with true intent, you'll pass. Certifications are great for professional development, but you'll still need experience and some money in your pocket for all your efforts. If you haven't found a job yet, check out my other video called Avoid the 2023 Remote Job Crash, How to Get a Remote Tech Support Job. In that video, I go over how to find who's hiring for remote tech support, what your resume should look like, how to apply to tech jobs with no prior professional tech experience, how to approach the most common interview question, and the most important thing you should be doing every day to rack up interviews and land a remote tech support job. If you got value out of this episode, subscribe to the channel and please share this video with someone who will benefit from it. I appreciate your time and see you in the next one. And remember, success is a choice.